Chan is back in custody. On Tuesday, the Alberta Court of Appeal gave Chan 24 hours to turn himself in. This feud has escalated over several years and has resulted in more than a dozen homicides. We continue to seek public assistance in locating a man wanted on Canada-wide murder and conspiracy charges. One small part in the overall picture in, in dealing with gangs and organized crime in Calgary. Hey guys, in today's video we'll be taking a look at a gang rivalry in the city of Calgary, Alberta that went beyond the fight for territories, drugs and money. It was fueled by mutual hate and revenge. It also took lives of people outside of the gang life. We are talking about the war between the FOB and FK gangs that spread fear on the streets of Calgary for almost a decade. Let's get into it. The origins of the two gangs can be traced back to the late 90s when brothers Nick Chan and Timothy Chan allegedly started selling drugs while they were still in high school. They were said to be brought into gang life by their uncle who was a prominent leader of the Devil Boys. Nick and Timothy Chan would get drugs from him and sell them on the streets of Calgary. The teenagers met another young man named Hans Jason Eastgard, and together they created the gang that would later become FOB or the Fresh Off The Boat Gang. Initially, they formed three groups. The Devil Boys under their uncle, the Young Dragons, and a third group headed by three men commonly referred to as the Tran Clan, Philip, Troy, and Jackie Tran, as well as a man named Billy Lai. Soon there was a falling out between the groups, and the Tran group and Billy Lai formed the FK Gang, while the other two groups had formed an alliance to create the FOB Gang. The official reason for the rift remains unknown, however, some police sources speculated that it was because of a petty disagreement over a stolen personal item or a fight over a girl. This was the start of the rivalry that made the streets of Calgary unsafe for close to a decade and took the lives of at least 25 people. The gangs were originally dealing drugs and initially selling in small quantities, however, they became fearless with time and started selling drugs by the kilogram. One of the FOB founders, Hans Eastgard, ran a Dalado powder cocaine business for 5 years with Timothy Chan before being caught. Eastgard took the charges to protect Timothy and went to prison. Outside of prison, the gang rivalry was turning better. The first significant confrontation between the two gangs came in February 2002 when members of both gangs got into a fight outside of a downtown karaoke bar. An FK member stabbed and killed Adam Yu, who wasn't in a gang but had friends who knew some FOB members. The dispute was said to be over an ex-girlfriend of one of the FK members. With time, the rivalry between the groups turned into a deep-seated hatred for each other. The rivalry turned bloody once again in December 2002 when FOB associate Jason Yoon was wounded in a drive-by shooting. Yoon was with FOB founders Nick and Timothy Chan at the time and the targeted hit resulted in multiple retaliation shootings in the coming weeks. Just six days later, two FK members were gunned down as revenge. One shot while shoveling snow outside of his home while another was shot at a downtown club. The killings were followed by a law enforcement action and the start of Operation Synergy, which resulted in 72 arrests meant to stop the continuing violence in the Calgary streets. However, this wasn't enough to stop the violence, since the rivalries continued in Alberta Correctional Facilities. It actually got so bad that the members of the two gangs had to be kept in separate detention centers to keep peace. There was a temporary stop in violence, but soon gang members started coming out on bail, and in February 2005, the levels of violence went back to normal, starting from a FOB member being fatally shot at a nightclub. By July 2005, at least five more people were killed in a string of shootings. According to police, what made the gang war so difficult to stop was the fact that the gangs had no set territories, no standard clothing, or tattoos. A police officer told the press, quote unquote, it was so random and volatile. There weren't any certain places to find these guys. The main motivation between the cycle of violence was said to be money. According to witness testimonies, FOB members would be paid if they beat up an FK member. Hospitalizations and deaths would fetch gang members as high as $20,000. However, the FOB gang wasn't the only group causing the violence, since the ruthlessness was clear on both sides of the rivalry. The FOB killers had even gained notoriety as killers for hire, and had expanded beyond Calgary. The gang had formed an alliance with the BC's infamous UN gang, FK founding members Troy Tran and Billy Lai were seen with UN founder Clay Roosh on multiple occasions. Billy Lai also faced charges for conspiring to murder the Bacon brothers during one of Vancouver's biggest turf wars, but his trial was delayed due to the sudden death of his lawyer, and the charges were stayed in 2019 with the prosecutor saying that the Crown no longer had enough evidence against Billy Lai. Troy Tran faced the same charges and was allegedly involved in the shooting of Jonathan Barber, who was mistakenly hit in 2008 when driving Jamie Bacon's vehicle. Charges against him were also thrown out. 
two weeks after Billy Lai was acquitted. This was over a lack of specific evidence except for the fact that he was near the crime scene. The court, however, did recognize that Troy Tran was involved in Clay Roosh's cross-border drug trade. Clay Roosh called Troy Tran and Billy Lai the Sea town guys, and was once caught in wiretrap remarking, quote unquote, the Sea town guys, they're fucking everywhere, anytime, boom boom boom. They had clearly earned a reputation for themselves beyond Calgary. The FKs were also benefiting from the alliance as they were getting greater access to Vancouver's cocaine trade through the UN. Meanwhile, the FOBs were also forming alliances inside Alberta prisons and recruiting new members through Hans Eastgard, who was in prison for violating terms of his parole. He later testified that FOB tried to control the prisons by rewarding new recruits if they managed to hurt the FK members. During Eastgard's prison stay, the FOB group aligned itself with native gangs such as the Red Alert and the Alberta Warriors to get greater manpower. The violence between the two groups continued and in 2007, a prominent FOB member was shot outside of his home. Sun was a recruiter and a close associate of Nick Chan. The police tried to warn FK leader Jackie Tran of the FOB killers about the threats to his life. He didn't seem to care about the warning though and told the police that he knew what was coming. He even told the police officer that quote unquote, this isn't going to be over until they're dead or we're all dead. And later that year on December 31st, another original FK member was shot dead in a driveway shooting. 2008 was the most violent year of the conflict, with at least 8 people killed and multiple wounded. A shooting in Calgary's Chinatown between gangs left 5 injured including Hans Eastgard. According to Hans, the incident left Nick Chan furious and he ordered FOB members to go hunting for rival FK members. In July 2008, a FOB member was murdered, which led to another chain of revenge hits. A month later in August, a member of the FK gang was shot and killed on his way to a friend's house. And on October 26, 3 people were shot in a Calgary restaurant. The attacker, later identified as a member of the FOB gang, believed that the targets were associated with the FK. The victims were Kevin Sess, who was a loose associate of another FK member, while the other two, Tina Kong and Sarath Khan, had no association with any gangs. Kevin Sess was shot seven times with a handgun while his girlfriend Tina Kong was fatally shot in the head. Sarath Khan was paralyzed in the attack. The watershed moment and the deadly rivalry came on New Year's Eve of 2009 when gangster Sanjeev Mon was targeted inside of the Bolsa restaurant. FOB members kidnapped another FK associate and used him to bring Sanjeev to the restaurant. Both gang members were shot multiple times by two masked gunmen. Sanjeev Mon and Aaron Bendel were killed along with an innocent bystander named Kenny Sua, who tried fleeing the shooting scene. The massacre forced the police to dedicate greater resources to end the gang rivalry. Operation Decino was launched and was much more successful than the previously conducted Operation Synergy. The police were able to charge gangsters with serious charges, and even managed to infiltrate gangs. While there weren't as many arrests as Operation Synergy, the police managed to get testimonies against the likes of Nick Chan, Timothy Chan, and other perpetrators of the Bolsa shooting. Calgary police called it the biggest gang investigation in the force's history, and claimed that it was worth every penny. Hans Eastgard turned informant and revealed that the killings of Kevin and the Bolsa shooting were arranged and directed by the alleged fall boss, Nick Chan. Other gang members were also charged. In another sting operation, dubbed Mr. Big, police officers pretended to be gangsters and got a confession out of Rio on Rio, a FOB associate, for his part in the Bolsa shooting. The success of Operation Decino was successful in eliminating violence from the streets. However, Nick Chan and FK still had some unfinished business. Nick Chan was repeatedly stabbed outside of an organic food store and rival FK gangster Billy Lai was charged with the attack. Chan himself was tried on multiple weapon-related offenses and separate first-degree murder charges. He went to prison in 2013 over numerous drug trafficking, weapon possession, and first-degree murder charges. He was acquitted of the first-degree murder charges in the Bolsa shooting in 2016 for the lack of a credible testimony. Since the case was solely based on the testimony of another convicted gangster, and Chan's defense was able to prove that the evidence wasn't enough for a conviction. And a year after that, he was cleared of weapons-related offenses for a lack of forensic evidence. And after one more year in 2018, Chan was cleared of all charges when a Calgary judge ruled that his right to a trial within a reasonable amount of time had been violated. The judge also said that the harsh conditions that Chan was kept in also warranted his release. During his stay in prison, Nick Chan repeatedly complained that his basic human rights were being violated. His complaints included not getting vegetarian meals or proper shoes. At one occasion, he even went to court over a lack of toilet paper and soap. He was also able to prove that he was kept in solitary confinement without any reason, despite having PTSD. Chan had tremendous success over his appeals and the court ruled that Nick Chan was segregated inside prison and lost his sense of identity and liberty. Nick Chan was set free and the judge blamed an underfunded justice system for his release. 
However, the prosecution appealed the ruling and the Alberta's Court of Appeal ordered a new trial in March 2019. It was decided that the judge who state charges against Nick Chan over court delays had not taken into account the delays caused by Chan's defense. Chan turned himself in for a new trial, but he was acquitted once again after the Crown decided that his case no longer met the standards for prosecution. The court said that new evidence that would make a conviction unlikely had come to light, so the charges had to be dropped. The alleged new evidence was never made public, but Nick Chan walked free once and for all. However, it hasn't been all good for Nick Chan outside of prison, since he was targeted once again with another attack in 2020, when he took multiple gunshot wounds in an alley, and was sent to the hospital but ended up surviving. It's pretty clear that even though Nick Chan is acquitted of all of his charges, it's possible that the constant attempts to take his life mean that he will likely have to keep looking over his shoulder. Chan's ex-wife had even testified about him being paranoid and driving in circles to avoid anyone following him. Meanwhile, Nick Chan's brother, Timothy Chan, remains at large. The authorities have asked Interpol for help in catching Timothy Chan, but police suspect that he could still be in Canada or even Calgary. The rivalry between the FOB and FK groups is an interesting one. An organization between friends that started as a shortcut to making money turned into a story of bloodshed that affected dozens of families and became a symbol of fear for not just the ordinary citizens, but seemingly even those who were a part of that violent war, all over something that police suspect was a minor issue. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more in the future. It helps out the channel so much. Also comment down below what you want to see next. Thanks for watching and have a good one.